This is episode three of the build your own do-it-yourself CNC router. In it, I'm gonna show you how to hook up your power supply to a cord that is grounded. And then I'm also going to show you how to transfer the power that's coming out at 36 volts to a stepper motor driver and which wires to hook in. And then finally, I'm gonna show you how to determine what paired wires go with what on the stepper motor. Before we begin, I need to talk a little bit about safety for just one moment. My first experience of safety goes back 20 years ago. I built a 3D printer from scratch. I had already built one from a kit before, but I made my own and I wasn't confident in my wiring abilities. So I went to a friend that was pretty good with electronics and he helped me wire up a power supply that was a computer power supply that I could take 12 volts off of for little NEMA 17s, which are the smaller brother of these NEMA 23s that we're using here today. And so we got all the wires hooked up on our power supply. We went, flipped on the switch and kaboom, uh, it blew up. There was smoke, there was sparks, a dead power supply. It was a rude awakening, but the perfect beginning lesson, meaning when you're messing with electricity, you need to make sure that you do it in a safe manner. And fortunately, my friend figured out what we did wrong. He was experienced, he had had some other mishaps, but you wanna make sure the mishaps you can walk away from. So I'm gonna recommend a few safety things, but everything that I'm saying, I'm telling you, you need to do at your own risk. And you also should verify what I'm saying. There's several YouTube videos out there on wiring a power supply. I recommend you watch at least two, maybe one from a, a professional electrician so that you know that what I'm telling you is, is accurate and you need to do your own due diligence. So with that being said, let me tell you what I did. And fortunately, the, the next time I wired it, the one for my CNC, I did my due diligence. And thus far, I've had no problems with my power supply. It worked great and it's been working for a couple years now. But let's, uh, let's get into this. I'm really excited. Today, we finally are going to get to physically start making things. And this is a power supply that I recommended in episode number one, a build your own do-it-yourself CNC router. Specifically, it's a 15 amp, 36 volt. Critical that you know that on the side, you need to toggle the switch over to 110 volts. And this should be obvious to everybody, but it isn't always. Make sure you have the right cord, which has got to be a grounded one. Make sure it's got sufficient gauge that it can handle the amperage, so at least 15 amps. And the next thing is never have one of these plugged in when you're messing with any of these wires or anything, or you could electrocute yourself. I mean, it sounds sobering, but as long as you keep this thing unplugged, you know, you should be safe with these wires. Then it's just a matter of hooking the right spots. You can loosen the screw. You can take that strip wire. I would have no more than say, at most a quarter of an inch of strip wire. Since it's braided, I like to twist it a little bit and I can, you can just tuck it between the metal plates uh, if you loosen the screw, one metal plate will go up with the screw and there will be a secondary metal plate below it. And you can slip that wire on the left-hand side of the screw so that when you tighten it down, if it will like help pull the wire around. If you put it on the right-hand side of the metal plate, uh, as you're tightening it, because it's righty-tighty, it potentially could push the wire out and not give you quite as good a connection. So you, that is one way. The black wire, we're going to hook to the L of our power supply at the end, we're gonna to hook to the white and the green of our power cord, we're gonna to hook to the ground. That's the standard electrical you know, code, but you know, make sure that your power cord that you might be using has those particular wires. And then the other terminals, the V plus and the V minus, those we're going to crimp on. So the V minus goes to the ground and the V plus goes to plus VDC. So, each stepper motor driver ultimately will have two of these. Now you go, if you count, there's three V pluses, there's three V minuses, but we have four stepper motors. And one of the leads, you're gonna actually have to crimp on two wires for your Y axis if you're gonna make you know, a, a Y axis that has two motors running it. We'll put them both on this same power supply. So these two wires that came out of here are coming out at 36 volts. They hook in here. In fact, those are the only two wires There'll be two wires coming out to each one of my stepper motor, motor drivers. All of these wires down here are coming from Anima. Now, truthfully, when I really build my CNC, uh, I'm going to unhook these wires, these four wires here, and I'm going to actually put a piece of shielded cable and hook the shielded cable in here and then eventually crimp a connector onto each one of these. It does matter. Uh, exactly how you hook these together. You cannot assume that the coating 
of the NEMA 23s, unfortunately, will always follow the same uh, convention. Uh, I found that the, the red and blue were paired and the black and, and green were paired. How do I know, how do you know whether, uh, you know, which ones are the A plus and the A minus or B plus or B minus? Well, you don't know that the, the sign, the plus or minus, but you can figure out the pair fairly easily. And this is a trick I learned from a makers group that I used to be a part of years and years ago. Uh, rather than um, rather than getting a voltmeter and you know, you know maybe check continuity of the circuits because what you've got is a bunch of coils that are on these NEMA 23s. You can do this little trick. If you take your NEMA 23 that has the wires and you twist your NEMA motor, you can feel that, you know, it's, this is a hard motor to twist. It's got, a, it's got magnets in, in there and you're you know, running them by the coils. You're generating some electricity, but uh, if you take two wires off the NEMA 23 and you just pinch them together like so, no, I don't have any power turn on, and you try to turn it now, this thing is like really hard to turn. Why is it really hard to turn? Because those coils are what we call paired. And so what that tells me is that this red and, and green wire are either, uh, I can either hook it up to the A plus and A minus, or I could hook it up to the B plus and B minus. It doesn't matter which ones you hook them up to or in what order. Uh, we can always switch it in the software if we end up having it go in the wrong direction. So the direction in which these are hooked up. So uh, to hook them up, you know, there's a little tiny, you know, there's a screw on the top of these terminals and you can even pull this whole green connector out if you want to. But if you take that screw and you loosen it, there's a little metal, what I like to call a garage door, that you're going to stick your wire into and make sure the wire part is going to hit that garage door when it closes. So you're literally trying to trap the wire against the, the metal because it's got to make contact. You can't just get the plastic making contact you got to get the metal part making contact. And then um, I'm going to loosen, loosen this. And I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a little metal garage door. You'll know when you, once you do this. And then you take this and you just twist it. And tug on them gently, and you should find that they're all fit. Uh, I haven't talked about any of these switches. I'm not gonna talk about these, these top switches here. I will say one word of caution. I'll mention this again in the next video, but just like the power supply had a special switch, there's a switch on the top of the stepper motor driver. This is huge. This cost me a couple days of time when I originally built my first CNC. I didn't know this switch was here because the old models of this particular driver didn't have that switch. And what that switch does is it tells what voltage is going to be coming in from our external source, in our case, our Arduino Uno, into these pins. And Arduino Uno is going to send it out 5 volts. I had this switch toggled to 24 volts. Um, so I needed it 5 because these, these top pins are coming in at 5 volts. So you need to toggle it over, in this case, uh, it looks like it's toggled over to the left. And there's a little diagram here. And so make sure you flip all four of your drivers over right away. So not only make sure this is set at 110, but also make sure that you toggle those to five volts and that will save you a lot of headaches. Otherwise you're gonna to try to run it and it just won't run and you, you, you'll you just go crazy checking all your connections and you can imagine uh, it was a silly mistake, but uh, you don't need to make my mistake. So with that being said, I think You've seen the main the main thing is the main thing. Uh, if you've never stripped a wire before, let me just, just show you. So this is just a piece of black wire, but this could have just as easily come off a power cord. Um, all you have to do is you, there's a gauge on this one to kind of tell you which one's appropriate for your wire. And like I said, about a quarter of an inch. And if you just pinch it really good and pull on it, it will strip off the end like so. And then... I like to twist them and then you could put on whatever connector you so desire. Um, 
like I could put on this little connector here. And then it's a blue connector. So all I would do is I would go over here to the, the blue dot on my crimpers. That'll tell you which one of these you use. Slide it in that blue dot area, which is correlated to the, the, uh, the diameter of the wire, the gauge, and you just crimp down good. And very, very quickly, I've got a really solid connection uh, and we're, you know, can hook this on to whatever terminal we want. In truth, I don't need this on anything right now, but all of that is essentially what you would do to the, the two wires that came off here, the V plus and the V minus. Uh, one of the, the V pluses is going to be hooked directly into the plus VDC and one of the, the V minuses um, uh, sorry, it's going to be hooked into the ground. And so I kept G for ground. So that's the V minus and it goes into this. And then the V plus I made black. And, uh, and that's essentially what I did is I just crimped on one of these terminals, loosened the screw all the way out and sandwiched it between the top plate and the bottom and re-fastened the screw. And you can see those, and I like, I really like that because it really cleans up your wiring and I just feel like it's a little more secure, uh, especially with these braided wires. You don't want one of these wires to cross one of these terminals because you'll short your signal and cause all kinds of problem or maybe even destroy your power supply. And when you get all done, make sure you close this. When you turn on the power supply for the first time, make sure you have eye protection on you can do everything right and you can still have a faulty power supply. Never be touching any of these terminals, any of these wires. Keep it away from kids. Put it in an electrical box. Hope that helps and um, we'll see you in the next video.